This is Gary Knoll. He's been described as the nation's leading promoter of dubious treatments for serious disease. Or in my term, the granddaddy of all quacks, vying for that title with Kevin Trudeau. There is no craziness he does not subscribe to. A brief listing. He's an HIV AIDS denialist. He's anti-vaccine. He sleeps two hours a night and advocates reduced sleep cycles. He believes big pharma and doctors are intentionally allowing people to get cancer and other chronic disease. He's in favor of homeopathy, chiropractic, acupuncture, herbalism, reiki, chelation therapy for autism, and megavitamin therapy for, well, everything. He believes that aging is the result of depleted enzymes and can be stopped and reversed with bee pollen because it's loaded with enzymes. In short, there's little he won't believe in. It occurs to me that he is, and here's a comparison that makes me smile, he is the Kent Hovind of alternative medicine. They both revel in their ignorance and lack of logic, and as I will show, they both play fast and loose with their qualifications. Gary Knoll, on his website, claims a PhD in human nutrition and public health science. We'll come back to that, but first he completed an associate degree in business administration at Mountain State College, a junior college in Beckley, West Virginia. Then he completed a BS at Edison State College, a college started in the 1970s in downtown Trenton that offers self-directed and distance learning programs for adults. Then he acquired his PhD at the College Without Walls, which is now called Union Institute. The Union Institute was an experiment between colleges started in the 60s to offer non-traditional studies outside a college campus. The focus is online courses, distance learning, and the students and campuses are located across the country, similar to the University of Phoenix. Now, what surprises me is that Union Institute does not currently offer a PhD program in human nutrition and public health science. They do offer an interdisciplinary degree in humanities. Current examples are ethical and creative leadership, public policy and social change, and humanities and culture. They're accredited for these degrees, but as stated on their website, they do not grant PhDs in the sciences. Stephen Barrett of Quackwatch reports that Gary's doctoral dissertation was on the physiological effects of caffeine. The way the study was done was about as complicated as taking a survey and measuring blood pressure. While this might be an interesting subject for a high school level biology lab, it doesn't constitute serious research and certainly nothing worth submitting as a dissertation. I'm reminded of Hoven's dissertation on creationism. I imagine Gary's dissertation also began, Hello, I'm Gary Knoll. Gary Knoll is also a licensed dietitian. The minimum requirements for this in New York are a two-year degree and experience in some capacity in food or nutrition, as well as passing a multiple choice test on food safety and nutrition. Once licensed, they're allowed to choose balanced menus for school lunches, to interview people and advise a healthy diet, but they aren't clinicians. They aren't trained in even the most basic diagnosis of disease or abnormality. Gary Knoll has about as much clinical qualification as the lunch lady at the local high school. What about his prestigious titles? Here's a list of what research and administration positions he claims on his current website. Research Fellow of the Institute of Applied Biology. Nutrition Research Division Director for the National Hypoglycemia Association. Researcher of Agricultural Sciences at the Fertile Earth Farm Project. Director of Nutrition for the Nutrition Institute of America founder of the National Health Resources Council. Let's see what strict Google searches turn up on these institutions. The Institute of Applied Biology returns only two kinds of hits of any interest, neither an institutional web page. One is a biography of Emmanuel Ravisi, the physician suspended for quackery, and the other is one of Gary Knoll's resumes. Next is the National Hypoglycemia Association, there were some hits, but this is apparently a front for publishing Gary Knoll books. The only address given is a P.O. box near Gary Knoll's home. The Fertile Earth Farm Project, as a strict search, has exactly two hits. Both are Gary Knoll's resume. That's got to be nearly a record. Nutrition Institute of America does have a website. Here it is. The other major hits were from 
Gary Knoll's resume, and a donations page on his main website. The National Health Resources Council is perhaps one of the worst. Every hit I found, hundreds of them, was a Gary Knoll resume reference. There is one hit for researcher Knoll, G in Medline. It is The Medical Uses of Garlic, Fact and Fiction, in American Pharmacology, published in 1982. Gary is the second of three authors, and therefore the least important. It doesn't appear to have been cited by any other papers. The only place I can find his published work is Penthouse. Not that I was looking, I don't read it for the articles. Gary is primarily a radio personality with his own show, Natural Living with Gary Knoll. He brags about winning 21 Silver Microphone Awards, which sounds very prestigious. It is, but the award is given for the best local or regional radio commercial. I'm not clear if they're saying his program is a commercial, or if he made a really terrific commercial for his products. He's also written over 70 books on, and this is directly from his website, nutrition, self-empowerment, and public health issues, including his most recent, Power Aging. You can conveniently purchase all your supplies directly from Gary. He dispenses advice and makes millions of dollars selling the cure as well. In short, Gary is the Kent Hovind of alternative medicine. His resume is riddled with shady honors and misinformation about his qualifications. None of it stands up to scrutiny. He's made no contribution to the field of science, and the only person who is clearly benefiting from his work seems to be Gary Knoll. Recently, Gary has been in the news a lot. It seems he fell ill after eating some of the product that he sells on his websites. The manufacturer, a large industrial vitamin factory that he trusts to make his product, had put 1,000 times the requested amount of vitamin D3 in the Red Stuff supplement. Gary was taking the product and became quite ill. He was fatigued, had to cancel his activities and lay in bed, and his feet and hands began cracking and bleeding. He hoped that by, wait for it, that by taking more of the product, that it would make him better. Of course, it didn't work. He was rushed to a real doctor who diagnosed and treated him for kidney damage. He's recovering well. His doctor reports that if he had waited just one more day, he might be dead now. He's currently suing the company that makes the product for him, and a full recall has been issued. Good news, though, for the next month only, the product is available, too, for the price of one. Get your orders in now. All kidding aside, will Gary come out of this with a different perspective on the megadoses of vitamins that he advocates and profits from? My money is on no. I don't think he's that smart. Thanks for watching.